this video, we're going to start submitting orders. The first order type we'll work with is the market order. We're going to look at all possible configurations for this type. In previous videos, we showed that there are exactly two possible configurations when using market orders. Our objective is to talk about whether the order will be a maker or a taker, and then verify this by actually submitting the order to the marketplace. We're going to observe how the order interacts with the order book, and we will check the fees associated with the execution. We'll end by discussing whether the configurations that we chose are practical. If you have already been following this series, I know the cat is already out of the bag for this one. This is because we have already said that market orders are always takers with fees. However, for the sake of completeness in this section of the playlist, we're going to cover it again. This time, we'll actually be submitting orders and seeing them in action. Additionally, this time around, we are going to keep track of the maker taker status in our spreadsheet. We can see here that we are starting at the top with these two order configurations for market orders. Since a market order only has one parameter that affects its behavior and there are two possible values for this parameter, we only have two ways to configure a market order. We have a buy side market order and we have a sell side market order. I want to also mention that when I say the behavior of the order, I'm referring to the maker taker status of the order when submitted. Another possible behavior that we've seen is slippage. We talked about slippage before, and it is possible that when our order executes, we incur slippage or we see it, but I don't want to muddy the water here by tracking it in our spreadsheet. We'll touch on slippage as we discuss the order execution, but we won't include it in our spreadsheet. Let's go ahead and jump to GDAX and get started. On the left, in the currency pair selection, we have Litecoin selected. In the order entry panel, we have our market order type also selected. Here, we can see our two options for the order side parameter. We have buy currently selected or we could also choose sell so these two buy and sell represent our two possible configurations now the next section we have is the amount and we're going to choose one usd just to keep the fees low and since we have zero litecoin currently in this account we're going to start out by demonstrating the buy side market order before we submit this order let's talk about the maker taker status to be a maker we need our order to post to the buy side of the order book. This is because our order is a buy order. If we are posted to the buy side of the order book, our amount of $1 will join the other bids at a price on the buy side. The possible prices on the buy side start at the highest bid and go down from there. Currently, we can see that the highest bid on the buy side of the order book is 7161. So if we want to join the bids on this side of the book, we have to have a price that is 7161 or lower. Since we are working with a market order, we have no way of even specifying any price. This means that we're going to be unable to join the buy side of the order book, and we are definitely going to be takers when using a market order. Since our order can't join the buy side of the order book, and our order is going to be a taker, when we submit our order, our order is going to jump in front of the highest bid and charge across the spread to the lowest ask. Well, that's just a Game of Thrones type of metaphor. What really is going to happen is that the matching engine will receive our buy side market order and match it with the sell side limit order that is sitting on the sell side of the order book. To do this match, the engine will take the first order sitting on the sell side order book at the lowest price. This will continue until our order is totally filled. If the amount at the lowest price cannot fill our order totally, the matching engine will move to the next best price on the book. This constitutes slippage. The price would have to slip up to the next lowest asking price on the sell side of the book. With our particular order, we should not see any slippage because there is enough supply on the book at the lowest asking price to totally fill our order. We can see that there is about 719 Litecoin sitting on the order book at the lowest asking price of 7162. This is definitely enough to fill our $1 worth of Litecoin. We are ready to place our order. I want you to watch for a couple of different things. The first thing to watch is the trade history. We will see a green row come in. This green row is called an uptick. 
Anytime a buyer is a taker in a trade, the trade will be considered an uptick. This is because the price ticks up to the lowest price on the sell side of the book. Ticks indicate who the taker is for each trade. If the taker is a buyer, the trade will be green. If the taker is a seller, the trade will be red. Next, I want you to watch the fill section. This should be populated immediately. And finally, I want you to watch the lowest asking price on the order book. This should blink to indicate that it was hit by a taker and the size will change by about $1 worth of Litecoin. This is roughly about 0.01 Litecoin at the current lowest asking price. Now we'll be able to see this and detect this as long as another trade doesn't happen simultaneously. So we'll hopefully get lucky there. I'm going to play the trade live first and then I'll play it back highlighting each of these sections. I'm going to place the order on the count of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now we have our Litecoin. There was quite a bit of activity going on. Sell side orders are gonna be very similar when we're dealing with market orders, except that we'll see a downtick in red instead of an uptick when we look on the trade history. So I'm gonna place the order in three, two, one. So we could just see there that our order hit the trade history as a down tick. We see 7184 in the trade history. In the fill section, we can see our two orders, our buy order and our sell order. In the fee column, we have positive values for both. So we were charged a fee for both orders since the orders executed as takers. At this point, we have demonstrated that market orders have no place on the order book. The order matching engine takes existing orders off of the order book to fill incoming market orders. This process happens very quickly. In the sell example we just completed, it was nearly instant. Just as I clicked the place order button, we saw our downtick hit the trade history. In the buy example we saw just before, I slowed the footage down considerably, about 10x slower in fact. When the buy side market order came into the marketplace, the order hit the lowest asking price on the sell side order book. When the sell side market order came into the marketplace, the order hit the highest bid on the order book. And this is how market orders work. There are only two possible configurations and for this reason they are the simplest order types. Now let's tackle our last question. Are these two configurations practical? And the answer for both of these is yes. These are legitimate ways to submit orders. Now market orders do carry additional risks that aren't associated with limit orders. One of those risks is that slippage can occur. However, this does depend on the size of the order. But this shouldn't be a big deal because we can calculate this beforehand by inspecting the order book. Now limit orders can slip as well and we will see this in the next videos however there is a limit to how far they can slip now if we are dealing with very large orders we know that significant slippage can occur if we inspect the order book and we calculate how far we might slip we have to be aware that we are trusting the state of the order book that we see at the time of the calculation even if we do trust what we see the composition of the order book can change as our order executes additionally we have to worry about flash crashes however if we are manually submitting a market order it's highly, highly unlikely that we would experience a flash crash at that moment. That would just be super rare. So even though that these scenarios, large order types and flash crashes are very rare, I still advocate using a limit order, even if we want an immediate execution. It simply doesn't make sense to not set some type of limit on what is allowed to happen as the order fills. So we'll go ahead and say that market orders are practical, but not preferred. And we've already seen that they are indeed 
takers. In the next video in this series, we will look closely at our next order type, the limit order. The limit order has four possible configurations. The existence of a limit price parameter gives us another parameter that we must consider, which is the location of this limit price on the book. The limit price can be located on the sell side or on the buy side of the order book, both of which have varying implications for the behavior that we see when we submit the order. The limit order will prove to be our go-to order type for most trades, so stay tuned for that.